BP is preparing another effort to stop the leak with a new plan known as Top Kill. Cement and mud are going to be shot into the well to plug it up. They're going to try that tomorrow. We should know by the end of the day whether it will work. If they don't do it right, it could make the leak even bigger. And BP is only giving the scheme a 60 to 70 percent chance of working. Meanwhile, the Environmental Protection Agency and BP are still bickering over the use of that chemical dispersant corrects it. The U.S. government trying to get BP to cut back on it, but admitting that it doesn't have a better option, Robin. I think bickering is the right word. So much back and forth on that with some signs surprising. One U.S. senator expressing frustration says BP doesn't stand for British Petroleum. It stands for beyond patience. That's the feeling of so many. Meanwhile, more and more oil hitting the beaches, seeping into the fragile marshes. But much of the damage you can't even see. It's, it's beneath the surface. So Sam Champion puts on his scuba gear and a hazmat suit, diving right in it to give us an extraordinary new view of the disaster, a window into the full scope of this spill. He says he's never seen anything like that before, and that's where we're going to begin. Sam is in Venice, Louisiana, after spending much of yesterday in the middle of the spill. Sam? Good morning, George and Robin. Yeah, and as bad as the pictures have been for more than a month now, you really don't get the full scope by looking at the surface. There is a new perspective this morning when you dive right in. This, critics say, is what BP does not want you to see. Oil and chemical dispersant swirling together into a toxic soup. Oh my God. Forming large plumes under the surface of the water as deep as 25 feet, perhaps deeper. The entire water column is thick with this oil and chemical dispersant mix and it's absolutely disgusting. I think this has got to be one of the most horrible things I've ever seen underwater. For nearly a month, we've seen pictures like these, showing the oil leak disaster from the air and along the surface of the Gulf's once crystal blue waters. But aside from video released by BP at the site of the leak, we haven't seen what it looks like deep below the Gulf and what's happening to this fragile and vital ecosystem. Until now. Good Morning America invited Philippe Cousteau, the chief ocean correspondent for Planet Green and the grandson of renowned oceanographer Jacques Cousteau on an exclusive and risky hazmat dive directly into the oil. We headed 25 miles out from the Louisiana coastline and then more than 25 feet down. That is coming straight over us, headed straight for us. The consistency is unlike anything I've ever seen. We wanted to see if the dispersants are breaking down the oil or if the byproduct they're forming is causing more damage to sea life. What we found, Philippe and scientists tell us, is cause for concern. A lot of people are saying that when you apply the chemical dispersion, you know, it, it disappears. The oil goes away. But here we go right now. This is evidence that doesn't happen. Instead, it appears the mixture is now breaking into small droplets, capable of passing right into the flesh of fish and birds. This oil is now just suspended. You can imagine any fish or any critters coming through this would just be covered in it. I am slippery. I feel like I was just buttered. And those globs of oil and chemicals now appear to be spreading even deeper into the Gulf, where they can be picked up by ocean currents. Unbelievable to be in this beautiful blue water at about 25, 26 feet, and then look up into this cloud, this dark black cloud, and honestly, it looks like a storm cloud, is rolling through the water. It's just this cloud of kind of granular oil. And you can see it dispersing, going down deeper and deeper into the water column. And you know, what we're hearing is that there are plumes of oil like this beneath the surface at various different depths. They can go for 10, 20, or more miles, miles and miles thick. So this is, you know, a snapshot of what's happening here in the Gulf of Mexico. This is a nightmare. This is a nightmare. Those suits that you see us in are specialized hazmat diving suits, and they are dry suits. They keep you protected from what's there in the water. And when we got out of the water, because we were coated in this oil and dispersant, they actually had to spray us down with a degreaser to get all of that off of us. And then you've got a shower to, to make sure that you have whatever spilled on you off, because any of that, if left on your skin, can cause burns. George? Okay, Sam, can you give us just a, uh, more of a sense of, you know, what does it smell like? What does it feel like? And, and, you know, as Philippe called this a nightmare, what does he believe this is going to mean for the entire Gulf ecosystem? 
Well, Philippe makes, first of all, I can tell you that as soon as you get on the water and you get anywhere near it, it smells um, like this, this terrible mixture of almost diesel fuel, gasoline, and oil. It's the kind of fumey smell that gives you an immediate headache and you have it all day because you smell it all day. But when we asked Philippe that question, here's what he said, George. He said that they don't know because they've never seen anything like this before. This is a huge area of a brand new kind of oily solution that is going to filter down through the Gulf and probably reach the bottom. So they don't know what's going to happen. And that's what frightened him the most, George. Oh, man, Sam, thanks very much. That is just extraordinary. Robin? It really is, George. And as you said just a moment ago, BP mounting yet another effort tomorrow to cap the well called a top kill. And still the question remains, is enough being done? Jeffrey Kaufman is in Grand Isle, Louisiana this morning and has the latest for us. Good morning, Jeffrey. Hi, Robin. Good morning. Well, you can feel this disaster moving into a, a new phase. Last week, the oil was just glancing the coastline. This week, the cleanup crews straining to stay ahead of it if they can get to it. Now about 65 miles of Louisiana coastline stained by that brown, oily goo. Meanwhile, a surprising change at the EPA. You know, we've been reporting on this controversy uh, of these dispersants. Some scientists saying they're doing more harm than good. The EPA says that their scientific testing shows that, in fact, they're doing a lot of good. They're not harmful. So BP can continue although they've asked them to use less. And finally, as you've noted, tomorrow the next best chance for stopping this leak, the so-called top kill, they'll inject drilling mud and cement into that blowout preventer. BP wanting to lower expectations, saying on, in shallow water they'd be confident, but this water is so deep they're hoping it works.